Are you thinking about getting prograde with the Margrave? Well, do you like CC? Do you like tanks? Do you love escapes? And do you love bicep curls? Then the Margrave is the hero for you. The lore of the Margrave is relatively simple. He's been in as many wars as he is in good team comps. That is to say all of them. The Margrave isn't even his name. It's a military rank, one he's earned by simply being too badass to say impossible or die. His most famous exploit came when he was fighting a demonic invasion. He challenged a Baylor to personal combat. You know, Baylor, the thing Gandalf had a trouble fighting. Yeah, the Margrave was just like, F yeah, let me at him. The demon took off his arm and taunted the Margrave, which just made him mad. He proceeded to disarm the demon, eh, eh, and beat him to death. I think we have a video of that. And, apparently through sheer intimidation, forced the arm to work for him. At that point, his lord didn't give him the proper props. Yep. So Margrave trashed that clan entirely. Which was the mightiest in the world at the time. It was so bad people use it as a cautionary tale to this day. But how is the Margrave in-game? He's the only proper tank with some of the highest health, that is to say 2,950, Wait, why is there a 50 at the end of that? And armor in the game, with a possibility of three massive AoE CCs. His damage is deceptively high as well, allowing for an assassination playstyle with his huge peels for allies or disruption for enemies. There's a saying, whoever kills the cheer buys the beer, and with that, the Margrave must be paying every day for the opposing team as he can ruin any well thought out plan. Since in Gigantic, upgrades are more of an art than a science, I'm going to run through each ability, their upgrades, and explain when to take them. His first ability, Demon Fist, is a basic four-hit melee combo. The left path, Doomstrike, increases the fourth hit damage, doubling it. You can further upgrade Doomstrike to do bonus damage on the final hit if more enemies nearby. Great for team fights, or increase its crit chance. But since the crit chance raises so fast anyways, yeah, I wouldn't take it unless you're getting into a ton of one-on-one -on -one duels. And if that's the case, you definitely should have gone the right path anyways. Ah, the right hand path. I used to think it was awful. But playing with it, it's become my go-to build. You can counter once every four seconds by pressing the back button and doing an auto attack. You'll do a special move. It's relatively short range, so it really is only great against melee assassins. But if you're up in some ranger's face, you can hit him with that as well. The lunge move does an extra 30% damage to attacking enemies, giving you 90 front armor, each point of armor reduces range damage by 1%, and melee by one half. So, yes, huge damage reduction during a counter, and interrupts attacks. All on an incredibly low 4 second cooldown. What? Also, it inflicts weakness, which means that you'll be taking even less damage from the guy you're hitting. This is all on an auto attack. That's crazy. You can also get resounding counter, which makes it so anybody watching the Margrave counter in close area is also countered. How? By the Margrave's sheer manliness and will. Duh. The other path gives you a longer weakness if you keep hitting your interrupted target. But really, why wouldn't you just counter them again? Now, the Margrave has a very long hit cycle. To get four hits takes forever, which means Doomfist can very easily be countered before the fourth hit in its combo. This is why I always go counter. If you have a ton of melee on the enemy team, go counter. If you have people who can interrupt you, especially a woo, get counter. If your enemy team has nothing but range, maybe go Demon Fist, but resounding counter. Hellburst is the Margrave's next ability. By holding down your button, you create a Reinhardian. Can I use that as an adjective? Well, I am, okay? A Reinhardian-esque shield. You deflect projectiles, but not beams. And since it's made from, I guess, Hellfire? It also hurts enemies in it. So, like a Reinhardt shield, if it was just a lot more manly. The longer you channel it for, the longer the cooldown is. Starting at 8 seconds, increasing 1 second for every second of use. Wow, that's a sentence. Stamina might be one of the Margrave's weakest areas. The right-hand path, Burst of Damage, removes the deflection from your shield, but significantly increases the damage. At almost 8 times base, doing 1k damage in 4 seconds. No way to run gives the stamina to brave Margrave more chances to apply his demonic grip to his enemies with a slow if attacking from the back, while Mayhem lets his ability crit, which really makes the enemies feel the burn. 
The Luck Bath is Eternal Flame, which increases the time the shield can be active by two seconds. But if you use those extra two seconds, the CD increases by two seconds, so... Maybe if you need a longer wall up to protect your allies, this is a good thing, but why haven't they moved into cover by then? Anyways, Impenetrable Flame grants you plus 25 front armor, which is okay. Almost any CC will knock out a channeled ability, and Melee seems to have those in spades, so it probably won't be up for long enough to be useful. Give him hell, which is what I think the Margrave yells whenever he sees an enemy, is the real winner here, as it turns your deflect shield into a reflect shield. Subtle difference, I know what you're saying, but that means when an HK focuses you, you bounce him all right back in his robot face and can put on the most shit-eating grin you've ever had. It also gives focus when you reflect, which means ground and pound is up more, which means you'll be even more of a pain in the ass to deal with. Maybe you can see which upgrades I like the most on this ability. So if you need damage, or have all melee enemies, go the right-hand path. With the option that suits you best. But, if you want to be a true terror, give him hell as a start. Charge Forth is a standard dash. That seems to clip terrain like 20% of the time. Uh, putting me on a treadmill and leading to my hilarious and sad death. It also gives you front armor. Which might be good if you're chasing somebody, but why would you do that? This is your hell no, I'm out button. Russian attack is the right hand path. Decreasing the distance, which is kind of small to start with, so yeah. If you hit the Q before you end your charge, you do an interrupting attack. With my hot on for CC, my dismissive tone of this ability should speak volumes. You can either upgrade this Q by igniting an enemy, doing about 170 damage over 3 seconds, or stunning and throwing them backwards with throwback attack. When the toss works, it is the easiest cliff game ability in the game, seriously. Even without that stun, which forces the enemy to look into the cold, uncaring eyes of the Margrave for far too long, only to be tossed backwards, like trash, into the waiting knives of friends, makes this ability okay. But its short range nature makes nailing this ability Kind of hard. Unless your team's on point almost the whole match and you have a ton of group fights, uh, don't take this upgrade, as I imagine the intended use is to toss fleeing enemies back into the wolves, and it really doesn't work that well. Relentless. Oh, how I love thee. This ability adds a ton of survivability to the Margrave, as long as he doesn't accidentally catch his toe on a rock, and adds something like 50% more distance to its charge over the same casting time. Yeah, the Margrave skips leg day, but damn can my boy sprint. Pure aggression moves all debuffs, aka a cleanse, off you and nearby allies when you use this ability. Irresistible charge grabs you 50 armor and you can't be pulled, pushed, or stunned. If you're up against a team with front heavy CC, grab aggression. If you have a team with retroactive stuff, irresistible charge is your boy. Both these sound great as a chasing skill. And you can do that if you know you're going to be okay. Instead, hang on to the dashes and escape, it can get you amazing disengages, even if you have no stamina, especially if Staggering Leap is off cooldown. Speaking of Staggering Leap, this is the first move people will be introduced to the Margrave with. You see a giant man majestically jumping onto your dumbass into a stun. With a 20 second cooldown, you need to time your jumps perfectly to make great use out of them, and the 0.5 second stun really is a better disengage than an engage. The left path, Blunt Trauma, increases the stun to 1 second, doubling the stun length, and Bone Crusher triples it to 1.5 seconds. However, it then leaves you weakened. And the other Margrave, no way should you ever be weak, but a 1.5 second stun could be great in organized play. Blunt Trauma's other path gives you a slow after your leap. Again, good, but not great. Now with the ability to jump attack and apply a cripple anyways if your opponent is running from you, and you just dive bomb them from out of the sky. Who the hell isn't running? Now on to SmackDown. Oh baby, is that some sweet sauce? Doubles the leap's range and about triples the damage, allowing for some amazing Margrave power bombs. Battlecry gives you 50 armor by 5 seconds, so about one quarter of the time stabbing leap's cooldown is, so you can have a ton of armor almost all the time. Or you take leap before you look, which removes 8 seconds from your leap cooldown, almost having the cooldown. Blunt Trauma might be good in a competitive team comp if you unload into a clumped up group. But I'm going to say it, I almost always go leap before you look, usually within my first two upgrades. Why? 
The leap distance increases so much that you can gauge out enemies from farther away, do significant AoE damage, and having my leap up so often means almost no assassin can try and jump my friends without getting some Margrave fisting to disengage. Almost every time I need to disengage, I have my jump ready, so it's a pain to try to kill me as I run away, then leap away. Plus, it looks badass, and isn't that why we're all here? Ground and Pound is your Margravian focus, which does AoE damage and a launch around him, increasing with both as you gain focus charges. It has a huge radius, but a slow casting time, so it's a bit hard to use as an assassination tool, and should be chained together with either your leap or charge to land in the middle of an enemy team. With Ground and Pound, Staggering Leap, and Resounding Counter, you have three forms of AoE CC. Yeah, just think about that for a second. Here's Vitality is Margrave's first personal upgrade, increasing his health, and if you open the lifeline, you increase your health and regen, which is a great defensive tool for sustain, especially with a pocket healer, as you gain around 300 HP and it'll be easier to fill up your massive health pool. The other path will give you extra stamina, which might be good for slap attacks. You've got enough escapes to not really worry about it, so skip this upgrade. On the other hand, Iron Skin gives about 200 extra HP after a focus for 5 seconds. Which is meh. Plus 5 armor always acts as if you have another 150 HP against drains and 75 against melee. But then concentration rapidly gains focus, which means you're dropping more focuses, which means more winning more team fights, which builds focuses, which, you know, a pound of armor almost needs concentration to make great use out of. So, yeah, don't take it. Margrave's level 5 talents, quick to anger and supercharger are... Okay, but the real winner here is Impact Crater. What killed the dinosaurs? A meteor? Nope, just the Margrave dunking from space. The increase to the radius is double, which increases the area by, let's see, 2 pi r squared, so like, like 4 times the square area is hit, which means people trying to escape ground zero have almost no chance, increasing your ability to hit even with shitty jumps. In Clash, you gain focus for enemy, every enemy hit, increasing the focus for multiple enemies, which you should be jumping into anyways, which gives you more focus, which lets you AoE ground pound, which is even more CC, which means your enemies are just stuck in a hellish limbo forever. With all of the focus talents I usually go into, I was able to drop two focuses during one push for wound. That's insane. That should not happen. My normal Margrave build is to rush, leap before you look, followed immediately by concentration. At this point, if the team is heavy melee, I go counter, or go relentless so I can survive more often. Level 5, Impact Crater is a must. Uh, then I grab whatever I didn't grab the previous level. I finish up with a Zounding Counter, then my charge pick depends upon my enemy team comp. And finally, I give him give him hell. To round out this pesky Margrave build. So how do I actually play the Margrave? No, but really, find an engagement, leap in, find a squishy or low target, and jump attack them as they run, crippling them. Spam this until they're either dead or the enemy team turns back on you, in which case, charge out of there, and if you need to, use a jump attack to clear the largest amount of distance. Later on, land your leap, followed by a resounding counter on the melee unit that you stunned. They will try and hit you, guaranteed. Ground and pound, jump attack a few times, Counter again, then either smack summon until leap is off CD, or charge out of the fight. Old War Buddies, aka heroes that work well with the Margrave. Trip, Vadasi, Uncle Sven. Trip, as well as most other squishies, will be happy with the amount of peel the Margrave can dish out. If they're running low, a staggering leap can be the difference between life and death. The same leap can make targets so much easier to land a heal kick on, or finish off their lethal combat doing more hectic team fights. Vadasi and the Margrave were made from one another. The Margrave goes in deep, takes a ton of shots, and Vadasi never lets him drop low, increasing his already impressive armor to ludicrous levels. If people try and turn on the Vadasi, they have to deal with the big man himself and all the CC and damage he can muster. Uncle Sven is a lot like Vadasi, but his bounce pad lets the Margrave reposition vertically without wasting one of his best CCs. Sven is also the king of DD buffs, since damage over time ignores armor, burns, frost, and poison, and bleeds are some of the most dangerous things to a Margrave. House Melchior Sympathizers, aka heroes 
who give the Margrave hell. Zenobia, Wu, Imani, and Lord Narsis. You'd think as a giant man, little old Zenobia would be easy to kill. Nope. Zenobia has weakness, bounces, slows, poisons, armor cracks, and bleeds for days. A good Zenobia player can kite a Margrave forever, weighing him down as she gains health. You might be able to flee, but you can't beat her. Don't even try unless she's low. Oh, but I've got my leap. If she's safe to bounce, she can knock you out of it. Oh, I have a shield. Her main attack is a beam. Just don't mess around with the Mistress of Dread. Who is a Kung Fu master? And as the old martial arts saying goes, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. And ain't no one bigger than the Margrave. Wu's stun, interrupts, launches are crazy. If you have a channel ability, expect for him to interrupt it. If you think you're about to escape, you're likely about to be pulled back. And while it's hard for Wu to outright kill the Margrave in a team fight, he locks you down and lets his teammates have his way with you. Don't use your shield or charge without knowing he's been neutralized first. And even if you get on the good side of a Wu engagement, he has escapes for days. You have tiny legs and you're not going to keep up with a fast frog. Hey, I'm an up-close bruiser. What's one of my greatest weaknesses? A woman who stands on the other side of the map putting bullets into my brain pan is an answer. Imani. As the Margrave, she can be one of the worst heroes to deal with. Mostly because she's never going to be near you when you engage. Then, when you got your back turned, running low on HP, expect a bullet to end your short-lived prison space. If you're fighting against a team with an Imani, start only counter-engaging on the enemy and leaving team fights with more HP than you think you need, just in case Sniper later has a beat on you. Lord Gnosis can be one of the worst opponents you go against, if he's built smart. A bleed Gnosis, remember, bleed ignores all that arm you're toting around, can ruin your day. A combo Gnosis is relatively easy. You can shut him down with all your CCs. You did take counter, didn't you? A fed Gnosis can charge in and out of combat with you, striking for massive bleed damage while you try and land your slow abilities. And he has a few interrupts of his own to knock you out of your escapes and channels. Try and stun, slap, and escape a Gnosis, forcing him to blow buffs before returning to engage. Counter as much as you can, and remember, he has no vertical abilities when you need to escape. Let's wrap this up with some Margrave rain-ending plays. Saying. You wanna play? You wanna play? It's your death, man! Oh, look, we'll play this friggin' ring around the rosy game again. Oh look, I win this time because I actually have friends helping. Die. We can still win this. Ugh. 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 You really don't want to play with me? We see what happens to people who want to play with me. They die! And I get to live! <laughs> Let me have this! I will do this! No, I will not do this. I just want to stay right here so it keeps coming up. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Bang! What about Siegland? Can we get Siegland? <laughs> I don't know. What's up, Siegland? What you up to, baby?
Siglin, come back! Let me have some love! They got a couple seconds and I can ult these guys. Oh, not ult. That's what I meant. Where are my friends? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I feel like I, I shout, where are my friends, way too much. That is the battle call of the wild Matlin. <laughs> okay, me versus a Taito. Who wins this fight? No! 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 Oh, yes! Who's the best around? I'm gonna have to fight this Taito on his creature. What's that? The McGrave is just too strong? I was not in that bullshit. I'm leaving. This was fun and all, but I'm done. Oh, I'm so done. <laughs> oh, all oh, that healing. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Lord. Lord, oh, Lord. Eh? <laughs> Oops. What's happening? We're Siglund. Okay. <laughs> I'm alive, guys. I'm not sure how. No, you don't get to summon on my points. Get out of my house. Oh, <laughs> this isn't my house. It's your house. Here's the keys. <laughs>